I once heard of an atheist who converted to Christianity, and the reason why was an interesting one. Uh, it was almost like a mundane kind of experience, except uh, that it began, uh, that the person began to pray. And here is the reason why. They went out to a porch, looked at a sunset, and felt gratitude, and in a moment, reflected on this gratitude felt like a contradiction to be grateful for a sunset and natural beauty or sense of meaning in one's life without anyone to be grateful to. And surely there is. Christians know this. Uh, it's part of our system. The Eucharist. It comes from the Greek word Eucharistia, which means Thanksgiving. Uh, we need. To, we we are all, we are called to remember a God who is the giver of every good and perfect gift. If you're looking for a way to add some system to your life or something regularized, let me urge you to gratitude, uh, systematic gratitude. Uh, psychologists, positive psychologists are, are on to this too. There's plenty of studies out there for how gratitude has this ability to make for some good psychological health. Atheists have seen this too and have wondered uh, what am I to do with intransitive gratitude, being grateful for no one to be grateful, because I don't want to give up this sense of gratitude, because it's a healthy-making thing. Um, atheist bloggers are talking about it. It's an issue. It's an issue. It's a, it, 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 it bothers uh, without having the worldview that, that uh, faith gives you. But having that in mind... Um, the, and even if you didn't, like say sometimes in psychology they'll say, hey, you know, you should take some more time, take some time every day, write three things you're grateful to for at the end of the day, or write a letter to someone of gratitude, write more thank you notes, uh, all good things. Uh, but let me give you another one, and this is actually more systematic. It comes from Saint Ignatius of Loyola. He was great at writing letters, by the way. He spent plenty of time every day writing letters to people. Um, thank you letters I'm sure as well as well as exhortation and, and advice but one thing they had every one of his Jesuits do is the examine the daily examine and normally when we hear examination of conscience every day we're like oh I have to look at my sins every day I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I do in line to confession every day well kind of yes but that's not what it's uh, all about to start with uh, it actually naturally flows from beginning with gratitude. You begin not looking at God as a judge, uh, taking account of your sins. You start with God as the giver of every good and perfect gift. And that's a much better place to start with, much more health-making for one's psychology and one's spirituality. And it's not just for that practical reason. It's because God is the giver of every good and perfect gift, first and foremost. Uh, Pseudo Dionysius he says that the good is diffusive of itself, this fruitfulness God is good, and that's why there's creation in the first place. Uh, he doesn't do anything bad. He only does good. So, knowing a little bit ma more about who God is, start there. Uh, now, when I first heard about Ig Ignatius's examine, uh, I, I, I found it a little bit repugnant because it seemed systematic. It was a prescription, and it was prescriptive. But slowly I began to find that it was actually descriptive. Uh, but it wasn't through actually trying to do the exam, and I came back to it. I came back to it after an experience I had in marriage. My wife, uh, with, with my wife, I, I, we, we decided to add this practice. We got into a place where we were really critical of each other, uh, where we were saying, you know, it was always, what have you done for me lately? And it, and it happened very unconsciously, and it very quickly made the days sour. And so, we looked at this and kind of reflected on it and said, we've got, to, we've got to change the game a little bit. And literally overnight, we were able to kind of like start shifting this. And, and the reason why is because we started with gratitude. We said, at the end of the day, we're going to look back at the day and we're going to look and say, what am I grateful to you for what you did to contribute to our union, to our relationship? Not what have you done for me lately, what have you done for us lately? Which also included, let's say, like changing diapers and things like that. Um, and we would be surprised about the things that we, that the other person was thanking us for. Uh, it might have even been something that we thought that we had upset them about that they were thanking thanking us for. So it added new a new line of communication, which was good from a purely human standpoint. But here's what's remarkable: 
So when you started with gratitude, you'd find that there are some times where, say, I would say, I'm thankful to you for this and this and this and this and this, and then turn to her and she'd be like, well, I can't think of anything. Help me remember what I should be grateful to you about. And maybe I could think of something. Hey, I kind of did this. Oh yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, no, that, that I was thankful for that. But sometimes it was, I can't think of anything either. How could I have done better today? Because um, you should be able to thank me for something and I can't think of anything either. And it became an examination of conscience. It became a place where uh, I, had a, I, I got new information to make a resolution for how I was gonna be better in this relationship the next day. And it all began with gratitude. Now, we both had things to be sorry for. We had, both had resolutions to make. But as soon as you turn to that vertical relationship, that access to God, you know that he doesn't have anything to be sorry for. And he doesn't need to make resolutions for tomorrow, but we do. And so uh, suddenly that examine, those steps become prescriptive where you begin with gratitude and you ask God to help you remember the ways that you could have responded better. And you make resolutions for those things. Uh, so I... I greatly urge you, uh, and myself, in, in fact, that especially in times as these, when um, we've had kind of the etch sketch of our life shaken up a bit, if you're going to find some system and, and something that you would place every day, um, maybe the exam would be a good place to start uh, at maybe toward the end of the day or right before dinner, after dinner, you take a walk, something, and examine. What are the things you're grateful to God for? And what are the ways that you might have been able to respond to him better and make some resolutions and ask for his grace?